the evolutionary explanation of eating behaviour by Mia, Sam and Dan. Gustation, this is the process of uh, tasting foods. Sweet foods tend to be foods which are high in glucose or other sugars. Sour foods um, tell us that they are gone off. Bitter foods suggest the presence of, of bacteria. Salty foods, salt is essential for a diet. And the m most recently invented or discovered taste, umami, which means a proteinous taste. Evidence from our biology suggests we're specialized to eat meat. We have a long duodenum for absorbing the protein. Also, we have smaller molars, which indicates that we have evolved um, to eat cooked food. Pre cooking allowed us to develop social and cognitive skills, according to BUS. Weapon making and sex for meat hypothesis. Skilled hunters were able to attain a prestige. So our eating behavior has considerable um, effects on our aggression levels and on relationships. Taste aversion and food neophobia. We like the food we, uh, the more we try it. We play it safe with what we know, according to Frost. Taste aversion it can be cured by learning. Guzzinger or Griesinger. The environment of e evolutionary adaptation. For example, the um, fleeing famine hypothesis. This explains why eating less can still allow us to have high activity and energy levels, where it is normally associated with tiredness and depression. This might be the case with anorexics. So um, if you're hungry, it makes sense to run away from where you're, you are you know, not getting food. So perhaps anorexia is a, um, a response to famine. Um, we developed methods of stopping food poisoning, according to Rangmetal. So just cooking, heat kills the bacteria. Uh, spices, flavoring to kill uh, bacteria, such so as Sherman and Hash. Bitter and sour, facial expressions, identify bad foods, according to Steiner. There's also the embryo protection hypothesis, so morning sickness. This may be an evolved hangover to rid the body of harmful foods, according to Prophet. High hygiene reduces uh, the chance of bacteria, toxins, etc., according to Buss. Evaluation. Gender bias doesn't seem to be a significant uh, factor. However, it's reductionist and tends to uh, ignore social ideas. It's not ethnocentric, although if you wanted to incorporate things like the thrifty gene hypothesis, it could have an ethnic dimension. It suggests nature rather than nurture is significant, although there's an element of nurture in terms of how we've adapted to things. It's deterministic, and there shouldn't be individual differences as a result. It's an evolutionary approach. It's hard to test, as it's mainly theory. We could perhaps look at fossil evidence. Uh, there's some generalizing from animals, um, which is problematic because obviously humans are different from animals. We have culture and language and ideas and reflection. It does have some base validity. However, there's a limited modern day application. It's anachronistic because we are no longer in the environment of evolutionary adaptation. It can explain odd characteristics of our diet, however. And that concludes Mia, Sam and Dan's presentation on the evolutionary explanation of eating behavior.